Hello and welcome to today's lecture on dynamic instruction scheduling with branch prediction. In the last two lectures, we have discussed various techniques of branch prediction and earlier we have discussed dynamic instruction scheduling. Now, today uh, we shall see how these two can be combined to achieve higher performance in a processor. But before that, let us have a quick recap of one very important concept that is data flow architecture, which is used in uh, dynamic instruction scheduling. You know, uh, earlier uh, data flow architectures were proposed with this basic idea that hardware represents direct encoding of compiler data flow graphs. So, for example, you have to perform this computation y is equal to a plus b by x and x is equal to a into a plus b plus b and input inputs are a and b and output is y and x. Now, uh, one can create in, in data flow architectures a data flow graph is created. So, here this is the data flow graph corresponding to this computation. Here you can see a and b are the inputs and y and x are the outputs and various operations like addition, then your multiplication and this division y x and addition, this addition. So, you can see all these are uh, given here. Now, what is the basic idea of data flow architecture? So, data flow along arcs in tokens, you can see here uh, two circles are given, these are known as tokens. When both the tokens are available, then uh, when two tokens arrive at the compute box, so this is your compute box, adder is a compute box and then the box fires and produces new token. So, uh, that means, if there are two tokens, I mean if there is a token on this arc, if there is another, there, there is also a token on this arc, then this uh, compute box will fire and produce a token at the output. And if there are split operations like this, then uh, copies of tokens are produced. That means, uh, here for example, A and B tokens are there, so it will, uh, this box will fire, produce a token here and that token will be available at this input at on this arc as well as on this arc. Now, you can see uh, tokens on A and tokens on this arc are available. So, this multiplication multiple it multiple uh, I mean uh, multiple compute box will fire and it will be it will produce a token here. Now, you can see token is present on this arc, token is already present on this arc. So, this this uh, this uh, add execute uh, unit will fire, compute unit will fire and as the token is available here and earlier there was a token here, now tokens are available on both these arcs. So, this this particular uh, uh, compute unit that is divide, divide will fire and finally, it will produce a token here. So, you see this is how the uh, the uh, the operate the data for the uh, the execute the oper the operation different computations are controlled with the help of tokens in data flow machines somewhat similar thing is done in uh, dynamic instruction i mean uh, scheduling and particularly in tomasolo's approach what is being done this data flow graph is uh, is implemented uh, 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 while executing instruction and uh, the hardware does it. That means, this data flow graph is created within the hardware with the help of reservation stations and other functional units to do it. So, uh, this is one very important concept and we have already discussed about this uh, dynamic instruction scheduling. Hardware rearranges the instruction execution to reduce stalls while maintaining data flow. You can see data flow and exception behavior. Here, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I have a briefly explained the operation of data flow architecture. Same concept has been borrowed here. 
and of course, it also maintains exception behavior, which is also important. And it has got many advantages, as we have already discussed. It allows handling situations not node and compile time. That means it is better than compile time instruction scheduling, and it simplifies the compiler. It allows the processor to tolerate unprecedented delays such as cache misses by executing other code while waiting for the miss to resolve, because it allows you out of order execution. Uh, so, if some instruction, if it is delayed, then other instruction which is out of order can, uh, can proceed, particularly uh, in processors in the early, early years when cache memory was not present or uh, even when cache memory is present. Uh, it may be delayed. So, if cache memory is not present, if it is a memory instruction, it will take long time. On the other hand, if there is cache memory, if there is cache miss, uh, it may take longer time because of cache miss. So, this type of uh, uh, problem is resolved, that means executing other codes while waiting for the miss to resolve. So, uh, that means the different delays of different instructions are tolerated. Then it allows code that was compiled for one pipeline in mind to run effectively on a different pipeline as I have elaborated earlier. Now, uh, in my next lecture, I shall discuss about another very important uh, technique that is hardware speculation. You will see that hardware speculation goes hand in hand with dynamic instruction scheduling. So, dynamic uh, the, 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 this, this dynamic instruction scheduling along with hardware speculation, which I shall discuss in my next lecture, which can lead to further performance advantage and, and particularly uh, as I have already mentioned, Tomasulo's building data flow graph on the fly. So, this that means this data flow graph, which is created here is cre created on the fly uh, in your uh, Tomasulo scheme. And we have already discussed about the uh, basic structure that you require to implement Thomas Lowe's scheme. You have the instruction queue, uh, then these are the floating point resistors. Main innovation is, is the availability of reservation stations as we have discussed uh, and uh, you have got load buffers and store buffers. And uh, this it the uh, the main features is register renaming that is achieved with the help of these reservation stations, which buffer the operands of instructions waiting to issue and by the issue logic that we have already discussed. And this avoids WAR, WA type of hazards without stalling. And distributed hazard detection and execution control by using reservation stations buffers the instructions and operation core operands. The uh, that means, uh, by, by with the help of this buffering, uh, you can uh, pass the results directly to the functional units from the reservation stations rather than going through resistors. <coughs> and uh, this common data bus bypassing is done because a common the result is uh, broadcast end on the common data bus, which, uh, which is received by all the functional units waiting for the operand to be loaded simultaneously. So, this is these are the key contributions of Thomas Lowe's approach. And uh, another thing is inst uh, integer instruction can pass branches. So, this, uh, this allows floating point operations beyond basic block of FPQ. And this can be done provided we have got uh, um, you know branch prediction. Only with the help of branch prediction this can be done as we shall see. So, uh, let us illustrate this with the help of Tomasulo's loop example. This is a loop example. Earlier we have seen how dynamic instruction scheduling can be done over the basic block, basic block, and you can uh, increase the size of the basic block by loop unrolling and all these things. But now uh, you will see that loop unrolling will be done. Uh, dynamically with the help of uh, 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 the with the help of uh, branch prediction so this is the example and we shall uh, uh, these are the assumptions we shall make assume multiply takes four cycles assume first load takes eight cycles because of cache miss and second load takes four uh, four clocks because as you know later on i shall discuss about 
uh, this cache memory and you will see that uh, whenever there is a cache miss trying to read a particular word, if that particular word is not present, the entire block comprising several words are transferred to the uh, cache memory and as a result subsequently if you read another word from that block, then it will lead to a hit. So, first time there will be a miss, subsequently there will be hit. So, that is what, we, what is being explained here and later on we shall discuss in detail uh, how the cache memory really works and uh, these terminologies like cache miss and cache hit. So, but for the time being let us assume that uh, first load will take 8 clock cycles because of cache miss and second loads will take 4 clock cycles. <coughs> And, and also uh, we shall see uh, uh, although I mean we, we shall to, to for the execution of this we shall show clocks for these two instructions which are essentially used for the purpose of uh, housekeeping uh, for loop computations you know you have to subtract R 1 which is uh, which is decremented uh, which is uh, I mean R, R 1 is decremented gradually which is acting as a pointer to different elements of an array and <coughs> this branch is uh, done uh, by checking care of uh, how many times the loop will proceed or not. So, uh, uh, by equating it to 0, checking it whether it is equal to a 0 or not. So, these two all the clocks uh, for these two will be also shown and we shall see that integer, in, uh, integer instructions will proceed ahead compared to uh, the floating point, uh, but we shall primarily focus on floating point operations. <coughs> now, uh, uh, hazards due to out of order executions, if a branch is predicted as taken multiple executions of loop can proceed at once using reservation stations. So, normally a, the execution is restricted to a basic block, but now if we know that a branch is predicted that means that loop will be taken I mean the branch will be taken in a loop then obviously the instructions of the uh, other iterations can be carried out. So, this is the basic idea here. That means, uh, if a branch is if the branch is uh, if a branch is predicted as taken, multiple executions of loop can proceed at once using reservation stations. How we shall discuss later. And an a load and store can safely execute out of order, provided they access different memory locations. So this is another thing uh, we have to take care of. Uh, we have uh, already discussed about the. Uh, you know that read after type of hazards which are essentially arising out of true dependency. Which, uh, which will be taken care of by Tomasulo's algorithm we have already seen how it is being done. Now, there are other two hazards write after read and write after write if they involve registers that means, if the read after write and write after write operations are involving registers that can be taken care of by register renaming can be taken care of using register renaming. that we have already discussed and in Tomasulo's algorithm this register renaming is done dynamically without actually involving registers that we have discussed in detail. Now, question naturally arises if these hazards arise involving memory then how it can be taken care of. So, uh, read write after read and re write after write hazards I mean depend uh, hazards arising out of name dependencies.
if they arise involving memory, then how you have to take care of. You may have a series of load and store instructions present in a uh, program. So, the way the, uh, the sequence in which they appear in a program, as you know, this is known as program order. Now, suppose you have got this is one load and you may have another load <coughs> say let it be F 0, 0 R 1 and there can be load and store, there can be several other load and store uh, before and after it. Now, let us consider load and this load let us consider and suppose this is also F 0 and, and it is involving a memory. Let us assume here it is some something 8 R 1, but in between the value of R 1 may have changed. Uh, which I have not written here. Now, uh, if these two involve the same memory, then means from the same memory you are loading, then what can what can happen? So, if you change the order, this will lead to a hazard, which is known as which is essentially write after write hazard. So, this is a write after write hazard. You are writing in the same register. So, how this type of uh, hazard can be overcome? Uh, in Thomas Sulo's approach. So, this is the, the, the you are reading from the same memory and you are from a particular memory and writing into a register, you are writing from, reading from memory writing into same register. So, in this case that means, uh, it is involving memory, but it is uh, it, it is writing into a same register. In that case, if, if this is executed fast and then this one this will lead to write after write hazard. How, how can it be overcome? This can be overcome in this way. So, whenever this instruction is, uh, is, uh, is executed, is I mean it encountered, then the effective address is calculated. So, effective address of this load of a particular load is calculated and that is available as you know in the A field, address field of the uh, Tomasulo's uh, that, uh, that, that the data structure, which is available in for the reservation stations. Now, whenever the, the, the then after knowing the effective address of a particular load, it checks whether there is any other load that is present, that is present, uh, uh, that is present uh, earlier, which is, uh, is which is active. That means. Uh, uh, which has not yet been carried out, then what you have to do? This particular load has to be uh, delayed. That means it will not be loaded into the uh, the load buffer. So there is a load buffer and store buffer. So the instruction following a load using the having the same effective address is not loaded. So this has this is how it has to be taken care of. And similarly, if, the, if this is a uh, the, there is a stored data, again uh, it is involving same register. So, you are storing the data uh, into a memory from this register and if this is executed first, then you are loading it and then you are loading it, loading it into, an, in, into the, in storing it into a memory location. So, this will lead to again uh, hazard. So, here also that means, uh, if the load is, uh, is succeeded by uh, store and load instructions, which are appearing having the same effective address, then that particular load has to be delayed. So, similar situations will happen in case, case of store instructions. That means, you have to look at the, uh, the calculate the effective address, which is present stored in that A field and that effective address has to be compared with other effective addresses preceding uh, though the, though that load and store instructions. 
which are uh, which has which have not yet been carried out but active that that present in the reservation station so uh, this is how you can take care of the uh, the load and store so if you load and store access uh, the same address out of order execution leads to war and w uh, or red RAW or WW type of hazards, particularly WAR or WAW type of hazards that we have already seen. To detect such hazards, the processor must compute the effective address of the load and store instructions in the program. And Tomasulo's schemes combine two different techniques the renaming of the architectural register to a large set of registers, buffering of the source operand from the register file. But this is essentially corresponding to uh, registers but for memory we have to do it this way. Now, let us consider the loop example that I have already mentioned and let us uh, we can see here, here uh, we have got two iterations present, two the instructions of two loops present in this uh, window, instruction window and this is the code to be executed which is present here. And Initially, this register R1 is having the value 80, that means the memory location uh, uh, that, that is being uh, available, I mean the, the from where it has to be loaded is 80. Now, with this starting point, let us see how the execution will proceed. So, these are I mean various things which are stored added uh, store buffers load and store buffers are shown here instruction loop is given here iteration count is given here this is the first iteration this is the second iteration and value of register used for address uh, in the iteration control is given here. Now, let us go to clock cycle 1. So, it will issue the load inst first load instruction and you can see the load unit is busy and the address is effective address is 80 that is available and the register in which it will be loaded uh, from I mean from this load instruction is given here and and this is pointing uh, this this load is being issued this instruction is being issued. Now, we go to the second uh, clock and the second instruction is the multiplication uh, double that is that is being issued and necessary data structure is updated and this shows that this particular instruction has been issued and here the busy uh, then operation then these are the I mean values from where it will get and here you can see uh, the value will be taken from read F2 R F2 and that will be that means the register it will be from the register. Uh, R F2 means it will be coming from register F2 and, and here uh, the one operand will come from load 1, this is F0 will come from load 1. So, this is being provided here and now we go to the third cycle and here the uh, this store instruction is issued of the first iteration and again the uh, corresponding data structure is updated. So, this busy uh, that means that store unit is becomes busy address corresponding address is 80 effective address is 80 and the uh, multiply uh, that that uh, that functional unit involved is I mean from where it will come this F 4 will come is uh, multi, uh, multiplier 1 <coughs> that is these are multiply multiplier 1. So, that is being shown here and uh, here there is no other change then it will go to the fourth cycle. <coughs> so, here implicit renaming sets up data flow graph that means implicit renaming means here you can see uh, you are uh, that 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 loading I mean implicit renaming means you will not really perform any renaming of these registers that means whenever you go to the second uh, second uh, iteration, but 
it will be done implicitly because the inform information will be taken, data will be taken from the reservation station as we shall see. So, you can see here load, it will come from load and again it will be provided here that means this F0, F0 will come here and uh, it will be provided here also for this store. So, you can see that means both of both the things are done here. Now, it will dispatch this survey instruction, but it will not go to the floating point queue. So, here it shows the floating point operations that queue, but the that subtraction immediate instruction it will not go to the floating point queue, but it will be executed. So, this will lead to uh, change the value of R 1. So, and that, that is what has happened that now, uh, now that register R 1 uh, has been changed, the value has been changed and it is now 72, so 8, 8 has been subtracted from it. And so, this instruction is executed, then this instruction will be executed and it will go to the second iteration. So, this instruction is getting executed. Now, it has got to the, it has gone to the second iteration. So, you can see there was two cycles missing here, 4 and 5 which is missing here before the uh, second iteration starts. So, before second iteration starts, the uh, two cycles are not present here because that calculation of the effective address for the second iteration was necessary and then computation of the condition. So, this condition is being performed and then it, uh, it, it, it will issue this instruction, load instruction now in the 6 clock cycle and accordingly the this load unit will now become busy, but here the effective address is 72 not 80 and as it is shown here. So, although you can see two load instructions uh, have been issued and uh, but they have the they have not completed their operation. <coughs> now, you can see what how, how it is happening here earlier the value uh, here it was written load 1. That means, this floating point register was supposed to be loaded from the operation of load 1. Now, it has been changed to load 2. That means, before loading was done, uh, the uh, load 2 is written here. That means, the F 0 never sees the value that is loaded from, well loaded by this loading 1 instruction, because that, uh, that this operation is not carried out it is the information is stored are available in the reservation stations, but it was not written into the registers. Before it was written into the registers, the uh, another uh, load operation has taken place, which will load into the same register. That is why uh, this has been modified. So, uh, the, this result writing before it proceeded to result writing that load instruction has not completed writing result. So, before that this has happened. So, this will not see uh, the load operation and uh, it will proceed to the next cycle. In the seventh cycle, again the second uh, multiplication operation is issued because you have got two multiplier. So, second multiplication operation is issued and necessary updating of the data, data structure is available here. So, here it will read uh, one operand will come from register F2 that value is written here is available in V k and uh, after load is performed, this value will be available here. So, load 1 and load 2 will provide the, uh, will I mean this shows that this operand will come from load 1 and load 2 and value of course, will come here in V j. <coughs> so, this instruction has been issued, now it will go to register file completely detached from computation, because you are uh, that computation will proceed without in, uh, involving the registers. Now, we have come to, uh, so you can see here that first iteration and second iteration, both the iterations are now uh, getting overlapped. 
it, they are getting overlapped. That means, the instructions of both the iterations have been issued, although that completion has not yet taken place. And now, the store instruction will be also issued, because it is there is a store unit available and store instruction is now issued. And accordingly, uh, the, the corresponding address is modified here, it will come from 72, effective address is 72. So, you can see there is no hazard so far uh, present in this. Now, it will perform this computation that load operation it will continue, uh, it will perform the, uh, it will complete the load, uh, load operation and because uh, we know that this load inst first load will take 8 cycles, that was our assumption because this was a cash miss. So, it has taken 8 cycles, it was issued here and it has taken 8 cycles. So, in the 9th cycle, the load operation is completed and now the value will be available uh, uh, in the, I mean in the corresponding uh, reservation unit and it will appear here you will see. Load is completing and obviously, this multiplier 1 is waiting for that data to be available here. Now, now it is dispatching this, this instruction. You can see uh, it will again now dispatch this one, that means it will corresponding to the, uh, for this instruction, I mean for the second iteration, this, this will continue. And now, here you can see as I was telling that the load has now completed and corresponding value is transferred directly to this uh, resistor V j. V j is a resistor which is available uh, as, uh, and as part of the reservation station. Now, both the values are available and obviously, in the next cycle this multiplication instruction will start computation. So, here uh, 4 is written here in indicating that the computation has started and it will require 4 cycles to perform the computation. And in the meantime, as you can see, uh, it is now prepared for the third iteration, because R 1 has been modified corresponding to the third iteration. So, the first iteration was corresponding to, I mean the effective address was 80, for the second iteration effective address was 72 and for the third, third iteration it is 64. So, it is already prepared for that and uh, load 2 is completing now, because it was started in uh, instruction cycle 6. So, it will take 4 cycles. So, in the 10th uh, 4 plus 6 plus 4 10 cycle it will come this load will be completed and it will dispatch this instruction and you can see this load is completing. So, result is written right, is being written here. So, uh, I mean uh, the result writing will take place in the 11th cycle and here the upper end is available. That means, result is available means it is providing to this multiplier 2, this load will provide multiplier 2 and it will directly go to the reservation station buffers and it will be available here. Now, uh, uh, here you can see in the meantime that F 0 has been updated to load 3. That means, again this result which is coming from the second load will not be written into the register, because uh, already another instruction has been issued, which will uh, provide the uh, upper end to this register F 0. So, this will continue in this way. So, next load in sequence is coming, for third iteration has started now. So, third iteration has started, next load in sequence. Now, question arises, will it be able to issue uh, you see, although this instruction can be issued, but it is not shown here, because uh, that uh, uh, this instruction window we have not updated, it has remained the same, although this instruction has been issued, this th third iteration instruction has been issued. Now, you can see this multiplier, this multiplication operation, can it be issued? The reason for that is, I mean it cannot be issued, the reason for that is both the multipliers are now busy. Since both the multipliers are busy, we have got two multipliers. 
So, this instruction cannot be issued until uh, the, uh, the, the multipliers, the other, the one of the two multipliers become free. So, as a consequence, although we shall re, uh, the third iteration has been reached, but this multiplier, multiplication operations cannot be issued because of structural hazard. Now, the here the third store, so the, the third store cannot also be issued. Why it cannot be issued? The reason for that is we have seen this Tomasulo's approach performs in order issue. That means, if multiplication cannot be issued, no other subsequent instruction can be issued. And as a consequence, since multiplication operation has not been issued here, cannot be issued, this store, this third store can, cannot be issued also. Now, this multiplication operation is uh, getting completed, uh, uh, it will, it has taken, it will be performing this, multiplication is complete. So, and multiplication operation that result will go to F 4 and F 4 and this stored data, this instruction is waiting for that data. So, uh, in the next cycle it will do that. So, you can see uh, it has started this, it has uh, performed, I mean provided the result, that result uh, will be used, uh, I mean by the by the stored data instruction to store the result, uh, but that that will uh, start in the next cycle after it is completed. And in the meantime, the another uh, this the second multiplier operation uh, will be, will be also completed. You can see both are uh, this is just in one cycle difference both are completing because here uh, uh, it was started issued in seventh cycle but uh, result were available. You see in this particular case, it has taken 10 plus 4, here it is 11 plus 4. So, multiplication operation is requiring 4 cycles. So, that is why here it is completing in 15th fifth, cycle and this will complete in 16th cycle as we shall see. So, it will be completing in 16th cycle and now the stored data will be completed stored data will perform completion. So, it will require 4 cycles, 14 plus 4, 18 and it is completing, rewriting the result and in the 19th cycle, uh, both uh, this one is uh, completing and I mean writing result and this one is completing, this, uh, the, this store is completing. And now you see this loop example, we have uh, the across the loop boundary computation has been performed and let us now look at this. Here we find that uh, in order issue, no instruction has been issued out of order 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8. So, in order issue has been performed, however, uh, out of order uh, completion execution has been done, out of order execution has been done and as a consequence you can see although uh, I mean it is completing in 18 cycle, but this is completing in 10 cycle. So, out of order completion again this is completing in 15 cycle and this is completing in 19 cycle. So, you can see here uh, out of order uh, completion is taking place not the way the not in the same order. So, this one is completing earlier than this, this one is completing earlier than this. So, uh, out of order completion is taking place and out of order execution is taking place and out of order completion is also taking place in this, in this part. So, as you can see this is how it is happening. Okay. <coughs> now, the question arises, why can Tomasulo's scheme overlap iterations of loops? How is it possible? 
Number one is reason is multiple iterations use different physical destination for registers. So, uh, it does register renaming. Because of register renaming, uh, it uh, different physical registers are being used and essentially you may consider it dynamic loop unrolling. Earlier we have discussed in detail loop unrolling which is carried out with the help of compiler and there we have seen explicitly you have to use registers available in the processor for the purpose of loop unrolling. But here uh, as you can see even without having architectural registers by, by, by that I mean registers available in the processor, it can do loop unrolling dynamically using the registers buffers available in the, re, in the reservation stations. So, that is, the, uh, that, is, that is the reason why it can do. Second is the reservation uh, uh, with the help of the reservation stations permit instruction issue to advance past integer control flow operation that we have already seen. Also buffer old values of registers totally avoiding WAR stall that we saw in the scoreboard. So, I mean uh, starting from scoreboarding uh, it is this that uh, uh, how the uh, write after read uh, stall uh, is avoided that uh, that we have discussed in detail that is also performed and as a conse consequence we are able to over overlap iterations of loops uh, in the Tomasulo scheme. These are the three major advantages provided by Tomasulo scheme. First of all, distribution of hazard detection logic. We have seen uh, there are distribution, uh, there are several reservation stations which will detect the hazards, and if multiple instructions wait on a single result, instructions can be passed simultaneously uh, by broadcast of common data bus and if a centralized register file were used, units would have to read their results from registers. So, uh, this thing uh, this thing is avoided because we are not using centralized register fi file, but we are using the, uh, this, uh, the, the, the registers files available in the reservation stations and elimination of stalls of WAW and WAR hazards. I have already elaborated on this, how these stalls are overcome uh, by, <coughs> by, by using that uh, uh, dynamic register renaming and by using that effective address calculation for uh, memory units. So, possible to have superscalar execution. Now, this will lead to another uh, possibility. So far, we have considered that number of instruction issued is only one. But if we have enough instructions available which can be executed in parallel, we can go for superscalar architecture. In other words, Tomasulo's basic scheme can be extended for superscalar architecture. However, in that case it may be necessary to have more than one common data bus and we may have to duplicate the reservation stations for the two uh, I mean more than one common data bus, but uh, it, it is possible to have superscalar execution. So, this is the summary reservation stations renaming to larger set of registers plus buffering of source operands. This prevents registers as bottleneck that means, the, the physical availability of registers in the processor that uh, restriction is overcome and I have already repeated many times. It avoids WAR and WA type of hazards of scoreboard using Tomasulo's algorithm and it allows loop unrolling in hardware, loop unrolling in hardware uh, uh, by dynamic register renaming is possible in this scheme. And this is also quite clear, it is not limited to basic blocks because you can go beyond branches, integer units gets ahead and it go it goes beyond branches and it helps cash misses, I have already explained this. And these are the three lasting contributions of Tomasulo's approach. Number one is dynamic instruction scheduling, register renaming and load and store disambiguation. Load and store disambiguation means 
that uh, that I mean uh, that W A W type of hazards and uh, W A R type of hazards arising out of load and store, these are being uh, overcome. I mean, this amalgamation of load and store is, is being done in Thomas Lowe's algorithm. And as a consequence, uh, the many descendants of 36091, that means as we know, the Thomas Lowe's approach was originally conceived or developed for 36091 to improve the performance of floating point operations. But subsequently, they have been incorporated in uh, all the uh, sub, uh, I mean a good number of modern processors like Pentium 2, PowerPC 604, MIPS uh, 10,000, HP P8 8000, DEC Alpha 21264. Of course, there are some drawbacks uh, that is the common data bus connects to multiple function and units because of high capacitance you know the, it will be slower. So, number of functional units that can be completed per cycle is limited to 1 because of common data bus. So, common data bus is a major concern in this Thomas Lowe's approach because all the functional units are feeding to a uh, common data bus and as more and more functional units are feeding to it, the capacitance increases and only one, uh, one of them can uh, uh, output the result uh, through that. Of course, it can go to multiple functional units, result can go to multiple functional units, but only one functional can, can, can unit can produce result on the common data bus. So, this is a, uh, this is a severe uh, restriction and so uh, the alternative approach is to have multiple common data bus, so more functional unit logic for parallel stores. So, this uh, this can be done, but it will definitely increase the complexity. So, that is one, uh, that is also a drawback of Thomas Lowe's scheme. So, the hardware complexity is uh, relatively high because you require reservation stations having large number of resistors and if you go for multiple common data bus, it will again increase the complexity of hardware. And another <coughs> Uh, important aspect is imprecise exceptions. So, effective handling is a major performance bottleneck. Let me briefly discuss about these uh, interrupts and exceptions which can arise in a processor. Now, uh, as you know, interrupts are essentially generated externally. As you know, each processor is provided with, suppose you have got a CPU. Usually, it is provided with two interrupts, two interrupt inputs. These interrupt inputs are known as uh, one is usually non maskable interrupt and another is maskable interrupt. They are available in variety of names, but whatever it may be, one is non maskable interrupt, another is maskable interrupt. Non maskable interrupt is commonly used for uh, I mean some kind of emergency situations. like power failure and other things. So, uh, it is restricted to that, but however, this, uh, this, this maskable interrupt input is commonly used for interrupts coming from I O devices and that has led to uh, that interrupt driven interrupt driven IO, IO operations. That means, uh, whenever an, an IO device is ready for uh, providing data to a processor, it will generate an interrupt, then the processor will read that data. So, that is the basic concept interrupt driven IO and uh, in that interrupt may also come from the uh, operating system. And another type of interrupts are exceptions. Exceptions are internal, which are which, which are generated within as the instructions are executed. So, uh, 
uh, for example, it, uh, an illegal opcode is executed. So, processor tries to execute an opcode and that code is not matching with any valid operation codes present in the processor. So, it will generate an exception. Similarly, then divide by 0, overflow, underflow, page fault. So, these are various situations that can happen dynamically as instructions are executed and this will lead to exceptions. That means, uh, so uh, whenever uh, this happens, OS need to, uh, needs to intervene to handle exceptions. Whenever this happens, usually uh, control is transferred to the operating system. CPU cannot handle these things, so that is why uh, the operating, the it is a control is transferred to the operating systems. But uh, there are uh, the imprecise exceptions are to be taken care of. So, what do you mean by imprecise exception? An exception is called imprecise when the processor state, uh, when an exception is raised, does not look exactly the same compared to when the instructions are executed in order. That means here this is arising out of out of order execution. We have seen, since we are performing out of order execution, uh, what can happen? The exceptions that can be generated by these instructions should be exactly same as if uh, those instructions have been executed in order. So, this has to be taken care of and uh, this is done with the help of the in an in out of order execution model an imprecise exception is said to be occur if when an exception is raised by an instruction, some instructions before it uh, may not be complete, some instruction after it are already complete. For example, a floating point instruction exception could be detected after an integer instruction that is much later in the program order is complete. So, this type of imprecise exceptions are to be taken care of. So, uh, we have uh, discussed Tomasulo's, uh, uh, Tomasulo's approach in the context of uh, whenever you have got branch prediction. So, with, along with branch prediction, Tomasulo's approach can help you to go beyond uh, loop iteration. I mean, you can ex execute instructions beyond loop boundaries. I mean, uh, multiple iterations can be executed one after the other if the uh, prediction is taken that we have demonstrated with the help of an example. And however, there are certain things like imprecise exceptions are to be taken care of. The various other things like different type of hazards are taken care of automatically that you have discussed in detail. In my next lecture, I shall discuss about another very important concept and uh, that is your uh, uh, not branch prediction, but uh, speculative execution. So, we shall see what is Apple speculative execution and how Tomasulo's scheme can be extended for uh, spe speculative execution that we shall discuss in my next lecture. Thank you.